Hey, YouTubers, this is Jacques Gaines from Jacques Gaines Photography. And today we are starting off and we are going to do a little edit in Luminar. Remember, guys, I am a Luminar affiliate. I want to tell you right off the bat, I am. So I also have a discount code, which will be in the description if you guys want to get this software for cheap. The utility of Luminar is the fact that it is quick, fast, and does the trick. And it can be quite extensive. It can be used as a plugin in Photoshop, or you can use it as a standalone. Today, we're going to play with landscapes. We're going to be using the Accent AI filter, the Golden Hour filter, and the Sunrays filter to make a landscape look better. We're talking instant gratification, people. It happens quick. So I went to a place called Pak Zubik, which is in the area of Rimouski, and uh, that's in the St. Lawrence River on Quebec province in Canada. If ever you guys get a chance, it's called Pak du Bic. I will leave a link to the tourist place below. Blog coming up soon. Also remember to like, share, subscribe. When you do that, you support my channel, and we keep on moving on. Thank you very much, everybody, for the support you've already given me. So let's just check some of these shots out. Now, I really want to show the drama of the light. So what I think I'm going to do is most likely go for 14, 14, 16. I really like what I'm seeing there. Let me make the thumbnail a bit bigger. There you go. That is very nice. So I will probably use 14, 16. Uh, pull bridge. I'm going to pull it down. I will now open Luminar, Luminar 2018, people. Uh, for now, I have a link. It'll bring you to the Luminar page. You can buy 2018, but you can also buy Luminar 3 with libraries for now for PC. Luminar 3 with libraries all the way to the end of January 2019 is not the best choice to do because they're working on their libraries and trying to debug it right now. It takes a while to open up the software, but I'm using Luminar 2 and the 2018 version, it is fantastic and great. So we open this file right here. Remember that in Luminar, you're working with an interface that is similar to Photoshop. Uh, you can use it as a plugin in Photoshop, or you can use it as a standalone. Today, it is a standalone. You have a couple of interfaces, but the two most popular is the one right here, where you work with layers on your right side of your screen. Uh, or you can use this one right here, which is super instant gratification. You just click this button right here and all of a sudden, all the different types of things that you want to uh, make happen can happen at the bottom. So I personally prefer to work in a Photoshop-esque type of environment. So let me start editing this shot. I will first go to the Add Filters button right here, click Add Filters. Now, there are two that are very good. There's Accent AI Filter and AI Sky Enhancer. Sky Enhancer obviously goes and works just with the sky, and I press AI Sky Enhancer. Check this out. It works just on the sky. Gives it contrast, gives you all the type of things that you might want in your shot. If you notice, one of the places where you see it really starts to make drama in your shot is up at the top. Notice the blue is light here. By pulling this lever up, your blue becomes darker, more dramatic. They're bringing in color contrast for the rest of the shot. And you can see down here, it makes something great. Now in the AI Sky Enhancer, do you want to affect the rest of the image? No. Do you want to affect the sky? Yes. So you can work with masks. Over here, you can pick your brush uh, tool right here. As you press your brush, what happens is your whole filter is applied to everything, but as soon as you click the brush once, it eliminates the filter everywhere and only puts it where the brush is. Now, to paint, you go up here and you press paint. To erase, you go here and you press erase. Much similar to the black and white painting in the mask. So if I start painting, right away you see the filter sort of disappears. You don't have to worry. You can paint your effect in. Now, if you want to see the mask and what you're doing, you can go here and press the eyedropper. It'll show you exactly where the mask is being applied. We want to apply it on the whole area 
up here in the sky. You'll notice with Luminar, though, you will definitely need, and this is maybe a word of warning for you guys, it does need some major processing power. I have noticed that with the software. Remember that any effect you put in, you can decide its intensity as well, just like you can with filters in Photoshop. You can go here, put some in there. There you go. So I am applying it mostly to the sky. Let's pull the eye drop off and see what happens. And let's pull the eye drop to see the layer looks without. That's without. That's with. So you can see that the top of the sky is the thing that's being affected the most. And the bottom here is being uh, enhanced as well. My next filter I will add is the AI filter. It's just an accent filter. Basically what it does is via artificial intelligence through the study of many images, it tries to see what it can do to this image. It recognizes the image, sees what type of image it is and does the necessary things to make stuff happen. If I start clicking this and moving this up, you can see that it's bringing out the blues a bit. I am not going to put a whole hell of a lot of effect on this just because the image is so nice. Now we are at the end of the day. Here's without, by the way, here's without, here's with. So it's brightening up the lower parts of the image. Uh, we can also try to look that's without and that's with, that's without, that's with. I really do like what it's doing with the clouds. I didn't realize that until now. Next, I will add golden hour. Now, remember at the top of your filters catalog, you could always click in here and just go G O L D. And all of a sudden your search will re show you the filter you have. There's so many filters in this software that you can actually uh, need to search. Sometimes I would press golden hour. Golden hour appears here. I will move this up. This dramatically plays with all the quote unquote golden hour colors within an image. What is golden hour? Golden hour is that time at sunset or at sunrise where the sun is low on the horizon, therefore going through a thicker and thicker atmosphere. Because of that, there are different types of light wavelengths that go through the atmosphere. So you get some of the nicest images and nicest light possible at those times of day. That's why they call it the golden hour. A lot of people like to film at that time. It is why Los Angeles is now the capital of movie making is because in the old days, golden hour was a very long time over there. The light was just specifically different in the area of Los Angeles and California. So if you bring that up, I always go to full. Don't panic everybody, but I always go to full to see what I'm actually doing. And then I pull down and try to get an image that I like a lot without, let's look with, without, with. So it's taking these oranges and sort of making them pop. You can pull down saturation as well on this. Always bring your amount high, play with the saturation where you want it, and then bring your amount down. That's how I work all the time. There you go for that. Now we're going to do the sun rays filter, which is sort of a magical, also uh, artificial intelligence type of thing. Okay, so we just go SUN, sun rays appears. We click on that, double click. Now, what happens when you do this is that you get a, an artificial sun that pops into your image. Uh, you are basically emulating a light source when you use sun rays. In the sun rays filter, make sure you click this button right here, place sun center. I personally advise everyone to take your sun center and put it where the sun actually is. Don't try to fool around and do an effect where this, there's a light source coming from another area. It's not a good idea. It'll just destroy the natural feel of your shot. Okay, for some reason I have two sun rays there. Sorry about that. I'll just take one away. There you go. Okay, back into my sun ray here. So as I'll go back to place sun center. Now, when one thing that really confused me with this, the, this filter is as soon as I opened it up, it, I didn't know what to do. The sun was at the top. Let me, let me hear it. Place sun center. 
and it was just sitting there and I didn't know what to do. But I, I, you really have to know to press this button here, play sun center. So pull your sun center down to the place where the sun naturally is. And from what I can see from this image, it is around here. Now, as you can see, do you notice the light rays sort of disappearing as you go near clouds or near obstacles and objects? That is the part of this software that's really cool and artificial intelligence in the sense that it really does uh, work with the image to try to come up with something as photorealistic as possible. Now, uh, you have a lot of parameters within sun rays that you can play with. The ones I play with the most are penetration because it decides on how much it's going to pop through the image. I always play with warmth. Why? Right now you're looking at sun rays that would not have been generated at this time of day. These sun rays are way too daylight noon. You can play with the warmth and the temperature of the sun rays by pulling them up and down. There you go. So now you see that there's a more realistic feel to the warmth of the rays because they fit in with the actual light source that is in the image. There you go. So as you play with those, you can also play with the amount that you have. Look, the number of rays here. This, you can have a billion rays, and the, I find that the higher you go in the amount of rays, the less realistic it is. If you pull that down a bit, you bring that here, you get a nice shot. Now, to me, it still isn't super realistic, what we're looking at. I bring a bit more rays in, length, warmth, and now you play with amount, how much you bring in. Now, some people, if you want to do something really dramatic, you can go for something like this. If you like, it's up to you. I personally just make this very, very subtle and just let it pop the screen a bit. Play with my warmth, get that light there. That's white, very white. You have to look carefully, like I'll pull this off just for the hell of it. You can see that if you look at the clouds around here, the light rays that you just put put in are actually affecting the color of the rest of the picture. If I bring that in, do you see that? Right around here, check right around here, you can see that the color gets warmer everywhere in that area. So it really does emulate the feel of a sun ray. Now, I think we got ourselves a nice image so far. Also, remember, you can also save filters preset if you like this. You think all of this is really great and it did a great job on your landscape. You know that the next time you get a landscape at sunset, uh, you can press this little gear button on the side here, save filters preset, and call it, let's say, sunset landscape. And you can create it. There you go. You got yourself a preset. I will take this image and I will export it because I love what I see. So I come over here to this button right here and I press the export to image. I will call this, and let me say I put this on, where should I put this? There you go, guys. Let's go look at that image. So there it is. So there it is, guys. That's the image that I made from uh, this image right here. And uh, I really think uh, we brought out some drama in that shot. I hope you enjoyed, everybody. Make sure you check at the bottom. You can get the discount code. It's Jacko G, and it is at the bottom, and it will save you a ton of money if you decide to buy Luminar and if you like it. I really suggest that if you guys are into instant gratification, seeing stuff happen real quick and posting real quick, it's the way to go. If you want to stick to Photoshop, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. You guys, like, share, subscribe, and don't forget, everybody, keep on making something from nothing.